The Old Testament reading is from Proverbs chapter 22, verses 1 to 16. A good name is to be chosen rather than great riches, and favor is better than silver or gold. The rich and the poor meet together. The Lord is the maker of them all. The prudent sees danger and hides himself, but the simple go on and suffer for it. The reward for humility and fear of the Lord is riches and honor in life. Thorns and snares are in the way of the crooked. Whoever guards his soul will keep far from them. Train up a child in the way he should go. Even when he is old, he will not depart from it. The rich rules over the poor, and the borrower is the slave of the lender. Whoever sows injustice will reap calamity, and the rod of his fury will fail. Whoever has a bountiful eye will be blessed, for he snares his bread with the poor. Drive out a scoffer, and strife will go out, and quarreling and abuse will cease. He who loves purity of heart and whose speech is gracious will have the king as his friend. The eyes of the Lord keep watch over knowledge, but he overthrows the words of the traitor. The sluggard says, there is a lion outside. I shall be killed in the streets. The mouth of the forbidden woman is in a, is a deep pit. He whom the Lord is angry will fall into it. Folly is bound up in the heart of a child, but the rod of discipline drives it far from him. Whoever oppresses the poor to increase his own wealth or gives to the rich will only come to poverty. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The epistle reading is 2 Corinthians, starting at chapter 4. Since we have the same spirit of faith according to what has been written, I believed and so I spoke. We also believe and so we also speak, knowing that he who raised the Lord Jesus will raise us also with Jesus and bring us with you into his presence. For it is all for your sake that as grace extends to more and more people, it may increase thanksgiving to the glory of God. So we do not lose heart, though our outer nature is wasting away, our inner nature is being renewed day by day. For this slight momentary affliction is preparing for us an eternal weight of glory beyond all comparison. As we look not to the things that we are, that are seen, but to the things that are unseen. For the things that are seen are transient, but the things that are unseen are internal. For we know that if a tent, which is our earthly home, is destroyed, we have a building from God, a house not made with hands, eternal in the heavens. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be, be to God. God. We rise for the Alleluia in verse. <laughs> According to St. John, the 15th chapter. Glory to you, O Lord. Jesus said, I am the true vine, and my Father is the vine dresser. Every branch of mine that does not bear fruit, he takes away. And every branch that does bear fruit, he prunes, that it may bear more fruit. Already you are clean because of the word that I have spoken to you. Abide in me, and I in you. As the branch cannot bear fruit by itself unless it abides in the vine, Neither can you, unless you abide in me. I am the vine, you are the branches. Whoever abides in me, and I in him, 
He it is that bears much fruit. For apart from me, you can do nothing. If anyone does not abide in me, he is thrown away like a branch and withers. And the branches are gathered, thrown into the fire, and burned. <clears throat> if you abide in me, and my words abide in you, ask whatever you wish, and it will be done for you. By this my Father is glorified, that you bear much fruit, and so prove to be my disciples. As the Father has loved me, so have I loved you. Abide in my love. If you keep my commandments, you will abide in my love, just as I have kept my Father's commandments and abide in his love. These things I have spoken to you, that my joy may be in you, and that your joy may be full. This is my commandment, that you love one another as I have loved you. Greater love has no one than this, that someone lays down his life for his friends. You are my friends if you do what I command you. No longer do I call you servants, for the servant does not know what his master is doing. But I have called you friends. For all that I have heard from my Father, I have made known to you. You did not choose me, but I chose you, and appointed you that you should go and bear fruit, and that your fruit should abide, so that whatever you ask the Father in my name, he may give it to you. These things I command you, so that you will love one another. This is the Gospel of the Lord. Praise, Praise to you, O Christ. Grace, mercy, and peace be with you from God our Father and from our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. The t text for this uh, morning's sermon is from Psalm 27. Uh, that you just heard earlier. This is a pretty special time in our church year where we get to celebrate commencements of our uh, young adults and also the confirmation of our youth. And as our youth and as our young adults and also you as you continue this chapter in your life, I'd like to encourage you with the words of Psalm 27. The psalmist tells us something about confidence. It tells us Confidence is towards the Lord. And what that means is when one has confidence, it means having faith in a moment of fear. Or, simply put, faith over fear. King David tells his audience this. Evildoers assail me to devour my flesh. An army encamp around about me. War rises up against me. Do not cast me off. Do not forsake me. Do not give me up to the will of my adversaries. False witnesses have risen against me and are breathing out violence. Like you and I, King David had many fears in his life. We don't really know exactly what point of his life this was written at. But we do know that when King David wrote this psalm, he was in danger and his life was in imminent danger and he was in a moment of fear. King David struggled emotionally and spiritually on the inside when King Saul sought after his life. And then later on, when his own son gave up everything to try to steal his throne from him. During these moments, King David's faith looked not to himself for confidence or strength, but it looked toward God and trusted him in this moment of fear. King David teaches you and I two things about ha having faith in a moment of fear. First, he focuses on what we know about God and not how he feels. God spoke to David and delivered his enemies before him. He knew that God sent the prophet Nathan to correct him and forgive him of all his sins when he committed adultery and stole Uriah's wife. King David knew and had faith in a God that provided for him and would not let his foot stumble and loved him in every way. And that's why when he wrote this psalm, even when every one of his emotions had told him that the Lord had abandoned him and left him out to dry, when it felt as if the walls of his life were crumbling in, King David writes these beautiful words, The Lord is my light and my salvation. Whom shall I fear? The Lord is the stronghold to my life. Of whom shall I be afraid? Though a host should encamp around against me, my heart shall not fear. You'll notice that verse 1 of this psalm is like a refrain to a song, meaning that as you progress through each verse of the psalm, and as you read about some of the maladies and the troubles that King David went through, 
you can always come back to verse 1 and be encouraged that the Lord is my light and my salvation. What shall I fear then? And then King David teaches us a second way to let faith triumph over fear and how one has faith amidst the fears. He tells us in verse 4, One thing I ask of the Lord that I will seek after, to live in the house of the Lord all the days of my life and inquire in his temple. Amidst every one of his fears, King David knew it was important to inquire in the temple and hear God's word shared with him regularly. Attending this house of worship was important because this is where God would meet him and promise to be, where God would come to him and forgive him of all his sins and strengthen his faith. And God listened to every one of his prayers. The confidence and faith that you and I have as Christians comes not from ourselves or something inside us, but it comes from an external promise that God makes to you. A promise that you can trust him and pray and, and he will listen to you. But sometimes, as we go through life, we let fears get in the way of having faith in God. We let the worries of our future and our finances, the present troubles of today, feel as if God were somewhere off distant, leaving us out to dry. Other times, confidence and pride can get in the way of ourselves and in the way of coming to church and hearing God's word. Sadly, on some Sundays and even Confirmation Sunday is the last time when many pastors will see their students and their families too. Confirmation is treated as a graduation, an end, rather than a commencement into the Christian life. This is what King David teaches us. And we have those moments of fear. He shows us that when God is not part of our picture, that's when we let fear rule over faith. Don't let your confirmation be a graduation, but a commencement. Don't live your life in fear, but walk in faith, knowing that the Lord is alongside you. Confidence is not the absence of fear in one's life, but faith in the one who is bigger than every single one of our troubles and our fears, and that the Lord has overcome them for you. God's Son gave up everything so that you would have a seat in his kingdom. And that's why you can have confidence in the midst of your fears, because you have a Lord that first loved you no matter what. He is with you in all that you do. He loves you so much that he sent his one and only son, Jesus, to walk this earth and alongside with you. You have nothing to fear because the Lord has delivered you from every single one of your sins, and you stand blameless before him. And as you inquire about your Lord, as he speaks to you every day and night, every week here in his temple, in his house of worship, he invites you to cast your burdens upon him, and he will take it to the cross. Psalm 27 is a psalm of confidence because a promise is attached to it. The Lord is your light and your salvation. So dear friends in Christ, Put into action what you've learned. Live in faith over fear. Walk with the Lord your God. And now may the peace of God which surpasses all understanding keep your heart and your mind in Christ Jesus. Amen.